Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the Pacific West Coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having an awesome week so far. I hope you're all happy and healthy. Welcome Kanupriya. Hi Jas, a lone girl. Hello Lynn, Dovlad, Beck, Sandeep. Good to see many students in the class. Welcome Laura and Kyber. Good to see our members. Uh, students in this class, we are doing an IELTS listening section practice with some strategy. We will listen and answer questions for the IELTS listening section. And this will be something about uh, an application and a meeting in today's class. Uh, this is an all chat class on February 10th. Everybody of course can join the chat, uh, give questions and answers throughout. Uh, so exciting times ahead. Um, the lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. For the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have tons and tons of help for you to improve for your IELTS exam. Click this big red button to join our premium package. You click join now and we have a discount code. The discount code is better nouns uh, 25. Uh, this is coming from our uh, latest video on um, warning candidates to use better nouns than using the word things and stuff in your speaking and in your writing. So use that. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Uh, so well worth it. General IELTS, same idea. Click that big red button, apply the discount code, and you are off to the races. Uh, you have access to all of our practice exams, uh, videos, and interactive courses, as well as the apps as well. Andre, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for uh, wishing me well. I do appreciate that, students. So again, um, get all of our materials, use the code, uh, join us uh, or get our apps, Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help. Also, um, follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore A Help, G IELTS Help. Uh, join our group and you will improve for your IELTS. Everyone, right now we've got listening again, part one and part two. Tomorrow, members, we are doing a task one and then we will have speaking for everybody, followed by uh, more speaking on Saturday. If you have questions, just uh, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly help you out. Okay, so um, this is the plan for this listening class. We're going to uh, talk a bit of strategy. We're going to listen, answer the questions, and then we will review and talk uh, more strategy as well. Okay, so that's the plan for this class. All right, everybody, um, and let's do that. So let's um, jump over to our syllabus here. Here is our syllabus for the class. Again, my email, everyone, is adrian at aehelp.com, and the discount code is better nouns 25 So use that for that 25%. Um, let's talk strategy. So we're going to do the listening here and I'm going to introduce a key strategy to you. So here's strategy one. Strategy numero uno. Um, strategy number one is use the introduction time to get an idea of all of the topics of the four different parts of listening. Okay, so use the instruction time. Ashish, thank you for that super chat donation. That's lovely. 
Okay, weird. Thank you, Ashish Matthew. Um, I appreciate that. Awesome. Um, so use the instruction time to uh, get an idea of all four listening section topics. Okay. In the computer-based exam, it's really easy because at the bottom of your screen, you can hop through each of the four sections. Um, in the paper-based exam, you're going to have to turn the page. If the proctor or somebody's telling you not to do that, they're wrong. You're allowed to do that. Okay. All right. Carolina, welcome our chat moderator as well. Good to have you on board. Okay, um, so let's do this, everyone. Let's listen. Get your headsets if you got them. Um, and, uh, and while we're listening to the instructions, the instructions you're going to hear are very, very similar to the IELTS instructions. They last for about one minute. Okay, that instruction time is it's actually a little bit over one minute. I think it's almost closer to 90 seconds. Um, and use that, okay? All right, so let me just uh, engage our Okay, just a moment. I just have to make sure I'm set up properly for you here. Okay. All right. I'm just opening up our uh, book here for everybody. There we go. Okay, that's it. All right. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm hopping over to the website here because this is where the audio is. All right. So I go into my student account. I have a premium account here, of course. And um, I'm opening up our audio CDs. Uh, right now, students, uh, we are looking at um, our uh, sixth exam and we're looking at test one. So you can see here that it says uh, CD6 track one. So for those of you who actually have all of our materials, that's where you would be looking for this. Okay, so I'm going to play this audio. Uh, we're going to answer the question. So make sure that you answer while you uh, listen. Okay, and you're going to see me kind of move through all four of the sections at the beginning just to get an idea of the topic during the instruction time. And then you will see me come back to the question. So answer the questions. Don't put the answers in the chat. Give everybody a chance to answer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, and then we'll go through the answers at the end together. Okay. All right. Uh, so get ready to listen. Uh, in the IELTS, you answer while listening. It's a little bit different from TOEFL in this way. In TOEFL, you answer at the end. Okay, here we go, everybody. Get ready to listen and answer. We'll go through the answers together at the end. Here we go. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions, Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between a man and a woman concerning the requirements of running for municipal office. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, 
The conversation relating to this question will be played. Good morning. You've reached the Information Office for Municipal Affairs. This is Florence speaking. Good morning, Florence. My name is Walter, and I'd like some information on running for Municipal Office in the upcoming election. You're in the right place. The first piece of information I'll need from you is the specific office you'd like to run for. Town Councillor, I'd imagine. The man says he would like to run for Town Councillor. So this has been indicated for you. Now we begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning. You've reached the Information Office for Municipal Affairs. This is Florence speaking. Good morning, Florence. My name is Walter and I'd like some information on running for municipal office in the upcoming election. You're in the right place. The first piece of information I'll need from you is the specific office you'd like to run for. Town councillor, I'd imagine. Great. I need some information from you in order to get you on the ballot this September. Are you ready to get started? Yes, I'm ready. This should only take a few minutes. Okay, then. Let's start with your surname, Walter. Colchester. C-O-L-C-H-E-S-T-E-R And Walter is spelt in the regular fashion? Yes, W-A-L-T-E-R Okay, next I need your date of birth. I was born the 11th of December, 1979. The 11th of December, 1979 makes you 36 years old at the time of the September elections. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct. Great. I'll need your national insurance number. My national insurance number is WC2856983. WC2856983. That's right. Great. And the last pieces of information I need from you are your current address and phone number. I live at 23 Shaftbury Lane, Plymouth. And you can reach me on 01-752-667-835. Wonderful. Next, I'll give you some information on running for municipal office. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. First of all, you should know that you are one of 15 candidates so far that have registered for the four town councillor positions. Since the deadline for registration is in a week, I do not anticipate this number increasing by more than a candidate or two. Second, please know that there are three all-candidate debates, of which you must attend two in order to qualify for office. I have to participate in debates. Yes, that's right. They are on the 14th and 28th of August, and the final one is held on the 4th of September. They'll be held at the local community hall on Ashford Street. Each one begins at six o'clock in the evening. That sounds fine. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, there is. Do you plan on spending money on your campaign? This could be on adverts in newspapers, promotional signage, or other advertising. Well, I was planning on taking an ad out in the local paper, yes. Not a problem, but please keep in mind that there is a strict £2,000 limit on campaign spending for town councillors. All expenses must be reported to this office. Overspending will result in disqualification. I don't think that should be a problem. Oh, and one more thing, Mr Colchester. There is a £50 registration fee for each candidate for town councillor. You may pay this fee over the phone by credit card, with a cheque in the post, or in person with cash, credit or debit. How would you like to pay? 
I live right by the office, so I'll drop by this afternoon to pay in person. My assistant will take care of that for you. I think that is all I need from my end. Do you have any questions? I don't think so. Thanks for your help. You're welcome, and good luck. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, students, so now I take that half minute and I check my answers, all right? So I always check my answers. So I go back, I look at my answers. Now you don't see them yet, obviously, because we will do them together, but I check my answers. So I check my spelling real quick here. I check to make sure that this makes sense. This, uh, okay, fine, there's not much I can do with date of birth. Uh, just make sure that I have uh, the month maybe spelled correctly and with these numbers, it's okay. And then um, I look at this, make sure I have all the information. I revisit the question parameters, no more than two words. Do I have all the necessary words in here to make sense, hopefully? Um, and then uh, here again, um, I look at this, I make sure I have the correct answer. I realize that they've given me the symbol for pound, so I don't need to write pound. Same thing here. So I just need some numbers there. I check those and then I look at my logic for the last three and I am off to the next uh, section. Okay, uh, let's do this together. So first of all, uh, the first strategy was to identify the topics of part one, part two, uh, part three, and uh, part four. Now, um, part one, as we um, just heard, is applying for or running for town councillor. Okay. So running for town councillor, let's uh, use the British spelling, town councillor. Um, okay, uh, part two, um, some kind of a company meeting. At a software company. Okay, um, what was part three and part four about? Anybody uh, catch that? So I was ripping through part three and part four, um, and it was quite clear. I looked at some of the questions, especially I was looking for words that were repeating in the questions. Um, so uh, anybody catch what part three and part four was about? Rohit says, part three was something about salaries. Part four was about inventions. Uh, Mian says, no, Mian says, part three was something about a theory or theories. Yeah, some kind of theories, art theories, I think it was. Art theories by an author, right? It's a person who wrote a book. Okay, uh, Sardarm. Uh, Sobirov says uh, part four is an academic lecture. Yeah, but what was that academic lecture about? So there was definitely a repeating word that I saw in the question there. Okay, and uh, something about, yeah, that's right, me, something about roads. Okay, so information history about roads. Very nice. Okay, so now my brain has a better idea of what to look forward to in the listening section and that is uh, going to help me I'm building confidence and I'm uh, generating ideas I'm collecting information in my head okay so again make sure to use the uh, introductory time to gather that valuable information that was my very first strategy tip for you today uh, here this part is strategy one use the instruction time that one minute to look at the other sections and gather some information about what is going on in each of the parts of the listening okay so that's what's going on that's what you need to do all right so uh 
the listening part one, let's answer these questions together. You can write all capital letters, but remember capital letters are slower. Okay, names have to be capitalized. So um, what was the answer for number one? Uh, the information that the administrator is gathering from this applicant includes their name, address, city, date of birth, phone number, national insurance number. And their name was, according to Amra Colchester, Simran agrees that it was Colchester. Calvin agrees. Yeah, I agree it's Colchester. And uh, again, you have to make sure. Now, on the computer-based exam, it's easy because you just hit caps lock and then write Colchester. Okay? Just make sure that uh, you've got the correct spelling. Okay? Colchester. And I've hit caps lock, so all of my answers are going to be capital today. Okay, and the address, uh, thankfully, they've given us the name of the lane. It's Shaftbury Lane. Uh, the address actually came later. It came after the date of birth, and I think even after the national insurance number. With these, fill out the forms. The answers are not always in the same order that you see the list. Okay. Yeah, and here was just a number. It was 23 uh, Shaftbury Lane. Very nice. Good work. Uh, Ulugbek, Vicky. Doublet Beck, Jas, nice, good answers. Yeah, 23 Shaftbury Lane. The date of birth, um, when was Mr. Colchester born? How about that? So here we needed uh, day, month, year. Okay, so we had to have all three. 11th of December, 1979, Kyber, very good. So 11, December, 19, uh, 79 all right um, somebody's saying uh, it should be just a three here because two is given no this is question two okay don't for don't confuse that with uh, the first part so this is question two three four five okay this is how it will appear on the paper-based exam so they would never just give half of a number, all right? That was an interesting question. Okay, so 11th December, 1979. And what is Mr. Colchester's phone number? Who caught that? Yeah, Kelvin, you can definitely write debts instead of December. So this is absolutely okay. It's faster. You don't have to write the full word, okay? Uh, Mehrdad, uh, for the first one, Walter is given, so you don't need to write Walter, okay? All right, phone number. Anybody catch the phone number of Mr. Colchester? He gives his phone number. What is it? It's okay to write Mehrdad uh, all in capitals. Yeah, absolutely. He's got a phone number. Phone number is 01752752. Uh, you don't need to worry about spaces. It can just be all one long string, okay, or hyphenation. Uh, 667 835. Uh, that is uh, Mr. Colchester's number. Um, and uh, Simran's got it. Kushi has it as well. Okay. Uh, now, Tri Duke Pham is answering question five, which is the national insurance number. National insurance number is WC. Ross is answering it as well. Uh, 2856. And oftentimes they repeat these twice, but not always. So be careful. 9835. Yep, it's WC 285698. 285698. Uh, 33. Three. It's not 35, it's 33. Three. Okay. So that is uh, the correct answer there. Okay, so if you've got three three, you're good. It's a double three. Okay, three three. 
So that was the first little bit and then you had a, a minute break and I was kind of showing you how to review and how fast you need to be to review these uh, next set of questions, okay? So I realized here that, okay, we've got to complete the table below and there are some important uh, column headings uh, including date, uh, time, and location. Now this information comes pretty quick so the uh, administrator says there are three debates that you can participate in. You have to, I think she said, participate in at least two. And then she gives the time for the first two and then the third. So here you can take notes if you need to. Okay, so take notes if when it helps, if it helps, okay. Um, and uh, it looks like some of you took notes because you remembered when they all were. Kyber says the second one was August 28th. So again, just writing AUG, especially since this was really quick, AUG 28 is okay, right? So August 28th, right, is fine. Make this table a little bit bigger there. There we go. August 28th and the time is 6 p.m. Yes, 6 p.m. like that. Okay, you need the p.m. otherwise it's wrong because if you just put 6 on a 12-hour uh, clock that doesn't make sense, right? So 6 a.m., 6 p.m. Hmm. And if you write 6 it's actually it seems more like 6 a.m. because uh, it would then infer that you're using a a uh, 24 hour clock. So the other way that you could do this, uh, another good answer for this one would be 18, like that, okay? So if you wrote 18 o'clock like this, you would also get that correct, All right? That would also be fine. Uh, just Quran 20 or 2000 would not be right there, okay? Because that doesn't make sense. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Um, Oh, that's for number, okay, I think just run, that's you're jumping ahead. You're going for number eight there, right? Uh, Lakshay, didn't just say six o'clock, said six o'clock in the evening, okay? So six o'clock in the evening is 6 p.m. You have to be really careful. The campaign spending limit, um, Ulubek, uh, Sadur Pramil, um, Calvin, use the number, don't write the words 2000, okay? Uh, Kyber, good job. Bianca, yes, 2000. Okay, 2000 is the right answer there. And how much is the registration fee? And again, you don't need pounds because that's given. Uh, for us, the registration fee is 50 pounds. That makes sense. There you go, 50 pounds. Okay, so just five zero, not one five, but five zero, 50 pounds, 50 pounds. Okay. All right. Yeah, so when you have uh, no more than two words, okay, um, usually it will actually say and or a number like this. Okay, and or a number like that. Okay, um, but numbers are absolutely okay. Numbers are technically words as well. You just use numerals, okay? So, Kelvin, you can write it in words. Yep, so Kelvin's saying, why can't I write the words? You can, so you can do this, okay, students? You can write 2,000 like that, um, but you shouldn't because it's slower. Okay, uh, and you might make a spelling mistake. Okay, so use numbers when you can. All right, that's a good question in the IELTS, okay? All right. Okay, um, and then we had this kind of multi, multiple choice uh, for number 10, choose three letters, A to F. Okay, uh, now for this one, it's really hard to catch all of these. So what I did is I just took notes, okay? Strategy, take notes. All right, so that's all I did for that one.
So that's uh, that's what you do with these multi multiple choice. You you take some notes because it's going to be faster than and more accurate than trying to stare at these six choices and trying to figure out which three are correct. So I okay uh, over the phone uh, they will take a credit card. Um, they can take a check um, in the mail and in person debit or credit. Okay, so I'm looking at this. And then I go, okay, um, credit over the phone. Yeah, that one uh, looks uh, pretty good. Okay. Um, credit in person, if they're gonna take it over the phone, I'm sure they'll take it in person. And then uh, check by post. That looks pretty good. Okay, uh, check over the phone doesn't really work. Um, so the correct answers were B, C, and E. Okay, direct debit, cash by post. You should never mail money. Uh, check over the phone doesn't make sense. Okay, so that's what it is. Kyber says, "Hooray! I got ten out of 10. Uh, very good. Okay, so B, C, and E. Uh, students, uh, what did you get out of 10? So, what did you get from 10? Okay, ideally, you're going to get 9 or 10 from 10 so that you can get a high band score. Sarabjit says, I got nine out of 10. That's good, Sarabjit. Um, for us, eight out of 10 is okay. Uh, Piku, mm, six, definitely on the low side for part one. Part one is the easiest. Part two, part three uh, gets a lot more difficult. Laura says, I got nine. Lynn, uh, 10 out of 10. 10 is good, Lynn. All right, congratulations. Um, Sarabjit Pramos says, nine. That's pretty good. So nine or 10 is good. Part one, nine, 10, it's good. Uh, anything lower, you gotta really kind of figure it out because part two, three, four are much, much more challenging. And we're going to find that out very soon with part two. So here's part two. We know it's about some kind of a meeting um, in a company, some kind of a software company. Let's jump back over to the website and we'll play the audio. Uh, students, um, answer while you listen but don't put it in the chat so as to not confuse others we will go through the answers for this together okay so here we go everybody put on your headsets um, if you got them hopefully i'm not screaming too loud when i put these on it the outside world just disappears and sometimes i think i'm like yelling at you um okay so here we go uh, let's do uh, the next part, part two, and then um, we'll go through the answers at the end together. Okay, so this is back at our website. Here we go with part two. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a recording of three people discussing strategy for an upcoming meeting with investors. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Thank you both for coming in for this preparatory meeting. As you know, we have an extremely important meeting with our investors next week. While I am more than confident in the work we have done over the past year, we must be prepared to justify our progress to our investors. After all, they are the ones who pay our salaries. First, 
I want to review the positive outcomes we've achieved over the past year. This will make up the bulk of our presentation. Amy, would you like to give us a rundown on this front? Sure. We've achieved many positive outcomes over the past year, and furthermore, we've achieved more in the past four months than in the previous eight months. So we're certainly showing significant progress. First, and most important, sales of our app are up 50% from last year, totaling 586,000 units in the past 12 months, up from 390,000 units in the previous year. This is great progress. Second, we're achieving a higher purchase rate. While our sales are up 50%, the number of total downloads has remained relatively constant. This means our conversion rate has increased 50% as well. This clearly demonstrates that our efforts in this area have been fruitful. By targeting the conversion rate instead of the raw download rate, we have raised our standing and search result priority within the application stores. This will eventually lead to a higher download rate and even more sales. The upward trajectory here is very clear. We have also decreased the complaint rate from 2.5% to 1.5%. While our goal is to get this rate as close to zero as possible, this decrease represents a positive outcome and shows that our efforts to increase customer satisfaction have been successful. Yes, but if I may interrupt, I actually have to disagree on one point. I don't believe it should be a goal to get the complaint rate down to zero. While we certainly don't want a high complaint rate, the resources spent on getting the complaint rate down are better spent on increasing downloads and increasing the conversion rate. I think this is an important point to be made to the investors. While we certainly value the quality of our product, we are much more focused on maximising the value of the investor's investment. I think such a tack will go over well with the investors. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. That's a great point. We really want to emphasize that we are doing everything we can to optimize and maximize the money and resources we've been supplied with. Speaking of which, are we all agreed that we will be asking for 20% increase in operating budget? Yes. Yes. Good. And how are we going to justify such an increase? Well, certainly by pointing to the statistical outcomes you previously referenced, but also by our need to expand. We need to increase our catalogue of apps, and to do this, we will need to hire at least two additional developers. In addition to this, I think we are now at the point in our business where hiring a market analyst would be justified. Such a person could be charged with finding niches to exploit within the market. Right now, our operations in this regard are rudimentary at best and an expert in the field could help increase our sales volume significantly. Such an expert salary might take up 5% of our operating budget, but could lead to a 10% increase in sales or more. The 5% difference would result in a net income increase of almost £100,000. I agree. Hiring a market analyst is long overdue. One more justification for a budget increase is an across-the-board pay rise, if only at the rate of inflation. 2%, say. This would go a long way to increasing worker morale and output quality. In addition to this... That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And again, students, use that half minute to go over your answers and check them, make sure that they're accurate, make sure that they match with the instructions in listening. And we're going to go through them together. Um, and uh, as you saw, I'm kind of guiding you here. So of course you don't have this kind of assisted help in the actual IELTS exam. So you need to be uh, careful, okay? Uh, but uh, here you've got a little bit of assistance, which is good. I'm kind of showing you the uh, speed and the pacing um, as well, okay? All right. 
Um, here we go. So number 11, uh, who pays uh, for the um, salaries of the workers in the recording? Okay. This one should have been fairly simple. Kelvin says it's the investors. Yeah, that's right. It's the investors. And they say that very, very clearly. The investors pay for it. Okay, still got my caps locked down. I'm using all capitals, making sure I'm getting these right. Um, in the um, actual uh, computer-based exam, you're often dragging and dropping answers. So you're not actually typing all that much in the listening anyway. Um, all right, uh, in the paper-based deal though, you are definitely writing more, okay? So write no more than two words and or a number for each answer. Here we had to compare this company's performance uh, with from the past year uh, with the current year, okay? So for the past year, they give the number and the percentage. They say it's up 50%, and then they actually give the total number of sales here. Um, what was the total number of sales? It was a nice big number. Did anybody catch it? Let's see if anybody got it. Okay, it was not 15%. It was change from previous years up 15 50%. So what was the current year? Yeah, very good Minosh, very good Rashika. Rashika one missing zero 586,000. 1 2 3 586,000. So that was the current year sales, 586,000 sales. Okay? It's pretty good. All right? Okay, downloads, we don't have to worry about it too much. They're, it's filled out, it's constant, okay? Um, conversion rate, purchase rate, uh, the current year they don't give it, so they don't actually give the information there, but they do say what the change is for number 13. Um, anybody get it? And very good Rohit and Lakshay that you got the answer for that. Saeed as well. Uh, Mien says it's up 50%. It is up 50%, very good. Okay, so they say it's the same, it's up 50%. Okay, nicely done. All right, the complaint rate. This was a bit tricky, because um, they said the complaint rate, uh, the change, uh, and this was a trickier one, students, you gotta be careful with all. Sometimes they throw this bit of math at you. Um, Desu, very nice. So Desu says that was actually one, and the answer is one. Okay, uh, because, uh, they say the complaint rate is down 1.5%. It was 2.5% last year. So for this one, you had to do a little bit of math, okay? It was uh, like 2.5% minus 1.5% uh, equals 1%. So the answer for that one was 1%. It was this little bit of math that you kind of had to figure out for this last question. And they like doing that on IELTS where they do a little bit of like this, are you really paying attention to what they're saying? Okay, all right, so you gotta be careful. Got something in my eye. All right, um, okay. So this one here, it was a tricky one. It, the the man kind of says, uh, about the complaint rate, uh, I don't know about that. They're like, we should focus on maximizing the ROI, not so much the complaint rate. And so I just took some notes here. That's what I was able to catch, okay? Um, so instead of looking at all of this writing here for the answers, I took a bit of notes and they were disagreeing on the complaint and the man said, let's focus on uh, ROI. So the correct answer for this one, number 15, very good, Amra and Rohit, was C, absolutely. And um, the answer for number 16, based on my notes, was maximizing the value of the investor's investments. So that would have been A, right? Maximizing return on investment. So number 15, C, number 16, A. Hopefully everybody got that. Okay, and then we had this last little bit here where we had to fill in the blanks. 
Um, this is a common type of question in the paper-based, computer-based. Computer-based, you're usually uh, kind of dropping, dragging and dropping answers. In the paper-based, you have to actually write them or you have to write a letter corresponding to a word. Okay, so here the employees are requesting a 20% uh, something um, in funding from the investors. Mian says it's a 20% increase. Yeah, this is part two, so don't overcomplicate. It's a 20% increase. Very good in funding. Nicely done. Okay. Um, this will allow the company to hire two additional. Now pay attention, it's two, okay? So two meaning that it's going to be plural, two additional developers. For Ross, operating budget for 17 doesn't make sense because if you read it, requesting a 20% operating budget is unclear, okay? So it's a little bit simpler here. Number 18 is developers, yeah with an S, okay, very important, uh, who will allow the company to broaden their catalog of apps. They would also like to hire a, number 19 was tricky. You had to kind of know this position. Who caught that? Let's see. Market analyst, very good, Calvin, nicely done. It's a market analyst. Okay, somebody who analyzes the opportunities in the market. It's a market analyst who would be in charge of finding new areas for development. Finally, the team wants a pay raise pegged to the rate of what? The rate of 2%. Uh, Mian, they might take 2%, but it's not actually the answer they're looking for. Desu, it's the rate of inflation. Yes. So the devaluation of money, the rate of inflation is the better answer. They say, like, say 2%. They might take 2% as an alternative answer. Sometimes IELTS does. If they feel like that's a correct answer in the context, they'll take it. But definitely the most accurate answer is uh, inflation. Okay, pegged to the rate of inflation. Okay, uh, Lakshay, again, uh, number 19 is market analyst. The answer for number 19 is market analyst. Okay, students, how did you do? What did you get out of 20? So what did you get from 20? And that's from part one and part two. Bum, bum, bum. Um, you should ideally, okay, so in a perfect world, if you're going for a band seven or higher, uh, for a band seven or more in the listening, your goal is to get at least 16 from 20. Okay, if you're getting less than that, it's going to become very tricky to get. Um, band seven or more because part three and part four just get more difficult, okay? So Rohit, if you got 19, you're on the right track. Lynn, 20 out of 20 is wonderful. You're on the right track. Saeed, 17 is still solid. Laura, 16 is just on the threshold um, of uh, getting a band seven. So if you've got more than 16, hey, you might be able to get a band eight or a band nine, right? Band nine, you can only make one mistake in the entire listening. Okay, um, so that's how it's done, everyone. Again, remember, you can get all of our six practice exams, over 100 hours of video lessons, strategies in HD, um, over 60 sample speaking interview lessons, um, as well as our apps uh, on our websites at uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Be sure to use this uh, discount code that we presented in our most recent video about don't use things and stuff in your speaking and writing. It's a 25% uh, discount and uh, the code is better nouns 25 that you can 
use on our website. Um, simply all you have to do is go to the website, uh, click on the red button, the join now button, uh, click on use coupon code, type better nouns 25, 26, 25, click continue and you are golden. One time payment, lifetime access. So join us on our websites and join me tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, members, the members chat class is task one uh, writing and it will be speaking part one for everyone and you'll get a chance to speak with me and I will give you uh, some feedback, band score estimations and lots more strategy. Have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you for us, Kelvin, Laura, members for your support. Thank you viewers for being here with me, Vicky, uh, Lemon, and uh, Kanipriya Aman, all of you are beautiful, wonderful people. Keep your chin up, push forward. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria for now. See you tomorrow.